Hi class, welcome back to Baking School. Today we are on lesson five of the Baking Fundamentals course, and today I wanna to talk to you about how to measure everything properly for baking. Now, as you may know, baking is an exact science, and it's extremely important that you know how to measure your ingredients properly. Now, there are two different techniques for measuring ingredients. The first is measuring by weight, and the second is measuring by volume. Now I want to talk about how to properly do each technique and the differences between the two. When you're measuring by weight, you're going to use a scale to measure each ingredient to the exact weight that you need for your recipe. Now this is an extremely accurate way to measure. When you measure by volume, you're actually using a measuring cup and filling it up to the top with your ingredient. So you're measuring it by the amount of space or the amount of volume that it takes up in the cup. Now this can be a less accurate way to measure because it's really easy to accidentally pack too much of an ingredient into your measuring cup or to not fill it quite all the way to the top. Okay, so let's go ahead and start by talking about measuring by weight. Now when you measure by weight, you're going to need a kitchen scale, and these are fairly inexpensive. You can easily find one for less than $20. And when you measure by weight, you have a few different options of the units of measurement you will use. Now in the United States, we're the most familiar with the imperial system, and those units of measurement are ounces and pounds. Now the rest of the world uses the metric system, and those units of measurement are grams and kilograms. I'd really like to encourage you to start learning how to measure by grams because that is the smallest form of measurement and going to be the most accurate. To use a digital scale, turn the scale on and use the unit button to change the settings. Grams is the preferred setting for baking. Set your bowl on the scale and then press the tear button to zero out the scale so that the bowl is not counted in the weight. Then begin measuring out your ingredient. You can see the written lesson for downloadable charts for converting common baking ingredients from volume measurements to weight measurements. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about measuring by volume. Now there are also a few different ways you can measure by volume. With the imperial system in the US, we have teaspoons, tablespoons, fluid ounces, cups, pints, quarts, and gallons. Now with the metric system, they have milliliters and liters. Now remember when measuring by volume, you are using a measuring cup to fill it up to the amount that you need of your ingredient. Now there are a few different tools you need when measuring by volume. This is a liquid measuring cup and you want to only use this when you are measuring liquids. And this is a dry measuring cup and you only want to use this when you are measuring dry ingredients. Now these two units of measurement are actually measuring exactly the same. If I filled this up with a cup of water and I poured it into my dry measuring cup, it would come right up to the top. But the way these two are designed differently, it just works much better and more accurately if you use this for measuring liquid and this for measuring dry. When you measure a dry ingredient in this, it would be very difficult to level the ingredient off at the top and make sure that it is very accurate. So you definitely don't wanna use this when measuring dry ingredients. Now these are measuring spoons and you would use this for measuring small, amounts of ingredients like spices or extracts or anything like that. Now one thing I really want to review is the difference between fluid ounces, which is volume measurement, and ounces, which is a weight measurement. Now these two things are not exactly the same. You might have been taught that one cup equals eight ounces. Well, it is true that one cup does equal eight fluid ounces, but that does not mean that one cup will always weigh eight ounces. Now the reason this can be really confusing is because water, milk, melted butter, and a few other liquid ingredients actually do equal the same amount by volume and weight. So one cup of water would equal eight ounces by weight. But this is not true for most dry ingredients and a lot of other heavier liquid ingredients like honey or molasses or something like that. Now the example I really like to use to illustrate this point is think about filling up a one cup measuring cup with feathers and then a one cup measuring cup with lead. Now are these two things going to equal the same amount by weight? 
Absolutely not. They are the same by volume, but they are not going to weigh the same. Okay, so let's talk about how to properly use all of these tools. Now, when you're measuring liquid ingredients with your liquid measuring cup, you wanna fill it up to the line and set it down on your counter and then get down at eye level with it so that you can see that the ingredient is exactly at the line. Now, when you're using dry measuring cups, you wanna fill it up all the way to the top and actually overflowing a little bit and then use a knife or the back of a spoon to level it off so that it is a very clean line on top. To measure powdery dry ingredients like flour or powdered sugar, start by stirring it and then lightly spoon it into your measuring cup without packing it down at all. Make sure the cup is overflowing and then use a knife to level it off. If you are going to measure by volume, using this proper technique is extremely important. This one cup of flour measured the proper way weighs 120 grams. And this next cup of flour measured by packing it into the measuring cup is weighing in at 151 grams. This difference is significant in baking. Brown sugar is the one ingredient that you do want to lightly pack into your measuring cup before leveling it off. When measuring things like spices or baking powder or baking soda, make sure that you also level off your measuring spoon. So that is it for today's lesson. Now I wanna give you your homework assignment. I'd love for you to practice measuring flour by volume and see how accurate you can get with it. Measure out one cup of flour using the spoon and level technique that we showed in the video and then pour it into a bowl on a scale and see how accurate you are. One cup of flour should weigh 120 grams. I'll see you guys next time, bye.